Welcome to Pragati Vichar Break the Bias. Hi everyone, today we have Trisha Deni Yogi with us and we are extremely honored to have her today for the Pragati Vichar Break the Bias on the occasion of International Women Day. So basically, uh, Friendless is organizing one day virtual event for all the strongest women personality across the publishing industry to commemorate their contribution towards the publishing in the industry and for the sake of the women in the th throughout the industry so i'm so glad to have trisha and yogi with us to have her today so welcome ma'am and i hope that you are doing very well so thank you very much for inviting me and thank you very much for the generous generous introduction uh, okay yeah so let's just start with the introduction Trisha De Nyugi is the Chief Operating Officer and the Director at Nyugi Books, an independent publishing house based in New Delhi. She began her career in publishing with the Sage Publication and has come a long way since then. She was a fellow at the Sunbul Fellowship Program 2020 and she is an advertise, uh, advisor to multiple organizations including the Heritage and Education Organization, Heritage Shala, and initiate for promoting Indian literature, Purple Pencil Project, and a diversity and inclusive platform belong. She is a trained in Bharat Natyam, plays piano, practice Karv Maga. I think Karv Maga is kind of yoga, right? Yeah, it's an Israeli martial arts. Okay, Israeli, I'm so sorry, Israeli martial arts. She holds uh, degrees in mathematics, economics, and business administration. So we are so glad to have you, ma'am. And I'm looking just on your profile and see, yeah, you are such a talented personality. I must say. Yeah, just trying. The credit grows <laughs> to my mother. Yeah, okay. So a strong anyway. woman pass on their things to the another strong woman. Uh, woman. I'm so glad that you have a mother like her. So yeah. I would like to start with my Q&A session. So my first question to you. The idea of giving significance to visuals as much as to the content of the book is very disparate from the other housing houses, publishing houses, as most of the publisher pay only heed to content. What is the story behind this idea? That is, okay. you know, bringing um, Yugi books. Yeah. So it's a long story. It it starts with the journey of Yogi books and much before that as well. We all know that the oldest surviving illustrated manuscript in the world is from India. It's okay. a Buddhist manuscript. So the concept of illustrated manuscript, that is uh, books with text and images, is not new to India. It's a very old phenomenon in India. Uh, in 2004, when my parents, both my mother and father, started Niyogi books, uh, they saw a look in this illustrated books spear uh, which is most commonly known as the coffee table book section but it's incorrectly known as coffee table books um, we publish books which are heavily invested in the research that is 60 percent text and 40 percent visuals okay. now why do we do that we all know that the visual retention is very high in humans and especially among children Okay. And there are subjects like art, textile, heritage, history, archival material, archival history, travel, and so on. They all work much better if you have the image in front of you. How can you see study art without actually seeing art? And it's not possible for all of us to go to different museums and see all those artworks. But books can reach your home. They can reach you. And you can actually uh, see a lot of these visuals without actually having to go to these museums all across the globe. Now, okay. this was an objective uh, with which Nyogi Books was uh, created, bringing fine publication within reach. Okay. And our aim is to reach almost every library, every school, every reader within India and outside India and make them aware or and, and, and interested in Indian, in the South Asian, actually, sub, uh, the culture. So that is how uh, we started publishing. Okay. And uh, it's been 18 years and we are going strong. We're coming out more illustrated books 
and even more in this uh, 22, uh, 2022 okay. and hopefully um, a lot more readers will find um, these books despite the algorithms which do not support uh, okay. illustrated books but I'm sure more uh, there will be more discovery because with each passing day readers are becoming discerning and right. they've always been very discerning readers yeah. but now more than ever and right. uh, yeah we hope that uh, these visually enriching enriching books will also be at par with okay. the books which are purely text and when we talk about content the images are equally a part of the content that we package as much as the text so uh, right. it's a different genre it's a different field which we saw a lacuna and we entered uh, yeah. into the market and that is how we came into being okay yeah thank you so much uh, trisha uh, it's a good thought that uh, new Yogi books has been doing it uh, you know illustrative content so my second question to you gradually day after day women are also amping up their journey in the publishing industry what would you like to say about this context um it's obviously a great uh, thing that is happening and there was a time which i have not seen which my uh, which the seniors and my predecessors have seen it was again a very um, all men uh, playing ground uh, yeah. playground but over the years since i joined in uh, publishing well well when i was when i was growing up i had seen some great um women in publishing and i was always inspired by them mm. first being my mother who was who is the co-publisher of of Niyogi books okay. secondly um Nitasha Devesher um, from Taylor and Francis. She was of great influence. Then um, Kartikeya, uh, she's right now with Context. But mm -hmm. that time when I knew her, she was with HarperCollins. And so I have seen very strong women um, in publishing and uh, some of my colleagues and friends like Aditi Mahishwari and Mani Prakashan. I'm glad to have friends uh, yeah. who are extremely strong and do are doing very well so it's not that now uh, now women are coming to the top women are at the top of publishing um, right. in the publishing industry but still we find less women in sales um, mm -hmm. there are some areas where women are in the forefront be it editing be it marketing be it um, any other designing and everything but we see that when it comes to sales the number of women working in sales is very low as mm -hmm. compared to um, the male in the uh, sales division so when I was getting I was initiated into the um, publishing industry um, and uh, I went with my uh, with Mr. Niyogi my father and uh, of course, we are not allowed to call him father at office. He's Mr. Niyogi to me. Okay. Um, and when I went for the first uh, international festival, he made me carry all the boxes on my shoulder and place it, open it and put it on display. So this was a part of the training. We have to learn from scratch. We had to package all the books and send across for parcel and everything. So we had to take care of everything from logistics to sales to everything. Okay. So I think um, I think there is a scope. There is a lot of scope for women to take uh, 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 take up the challenge and get into sales as well. But I think. Uh, publishing is that one industry which should be set as as a role model for the rest of the industries to see how women are performing, how well they're performing and how they're actually walking uh, shoulder to shoulder with um, the other genders. And the uh, publishing industry is extremely honored to have you, you know, women like you. And it's a wonderful thing. So my one question is, that have you always wanted to work in a publishing industry? I know that your dad come from this industry. So in the back of the mind that always, you know, this thing that we one day 
we need to follow our you know father footstep or a mother footstep so is it the same thing or you or you wanted to do something else in your life um in fact my parents never asked me to get into publishing okay. when i joined publishing i was i was in a very cushy job um great salary and everything um not in the publishing industry and um i left everything i went to work at 7 am came back at 11 pm and uh, i loved my work i absolutely loved my work but then i realized that was not for me and i mm-hmm. just left it and joined publishing my parents told me you're never going to get the money that you will get here so i said <laughs> doesn't matter doesn't matter it's a satisfaction in life that i want and this is what i want to be and this is what i want to do as 15 okay. when i decided when i saw my parents do it and uh, they never asked me to get into publishing they always okay. asked me to follow your dreams whatever you wanted to do so as a result i have a very varied background i have studied a lot and worked in very different sectors uh, okay. but i always wanted to get into publishing because some i feel is the most wholesome profession one can ever have Okay. so i don't think i want to do anything else apart from publishing this is life for me and i want to dedicate my entire life to this wow that's so wonderful and yeah you took your step and you made your own decision and look look at you your hair today okay i'm still learning i'm growing yeah you're still learning <laughs> way to go. okay and all the best for your journey yeah thank you so everyone has this notion in the back of their mind that how a, a woman can prove herself in the male dominating industry and can you share your thoughts on this and you said just that it's a male dominating industry publishing industry mm-hmm. and women are still learning you know set up uh, set their self uh, in this industry so what are your thoughts on this like every other sphere of our life i think uh, it's it's not always i may sound very weird here when i say that women should not work only keeping in mind that they have to challenge the women, men in the society okay. they need to keep in mind that they need to give their best we need to give our best and that is how we are going to come in the front and with more and more women coming into the forefront uh, this is not something which has happened overnight this has been happening for a while now we have uh, feminist publishers like urvashi botali and uh, ruti menon do great work and and change how we see things and then there are um, feminist men in this in this uh, uh, industry for example up my father um uh, a lot of people would agree with for their parents as well the younger generation who has come into publishing uh, especially women um okay. that they too understood the importance of having women in a in a in a in an organization ours has predominantly been a women driven organization right. and um, we have this strict our office is in okla but we have this strict policy that no one is to stay in office after 6 pm wow. whatever you do finish your work by 6 pm and you go home you have to live a different life so we make sure that there is balance uh in in in, in our uh, lives and at the same time because of uh, all the different responsibilities roles and everything nobody has to compromise or sacrifice any of these things so uh, we have been predominantly a women driven uh, 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 organization always uh, more women than men any day okay and uh, i think uh, that is true for most publishing organizations maybe because a lot of friends have made across the publishing and most of them are women are very strong women with a, and are doing extremely well at their work so i think it's all about perseverance and not always to take things as a competition if we need to really compete then we must compete with ourselves and give our best i think that should be the motto rather than uh 
wanting to um, and we can and that is how we are going to carve out a path for ourselves right. it's as simple as so it's a very beautiful thought and i am glad that your company employees are <laughs> glad as well that they have you know the director like you in their life uh okay the bosses are always the cruelest of them all <laughs> so it's just not for <laughs> that i don't know but still but the women driven you know company it's very good because you teach them that how to balance the life and work and it's a good thing because most of the organization do not you know do this this thing yeah so but we how we are yeah. family here so um it's it's there are many times most of our uh, most of our family members that is nyogi books they work even after office hours they're reading a manuscript or editing something and uh, i've been honored to have friends and families in them uh they never complain i even they even if they have to work one saturday extra just to finish off one of the editing work they don't complain and uh, and hence it's become it becomes very effortless to work with my team yeah that's amazing so how come neogi books predominantly represent the cultural heritage of india in their publications okay so we are based in india and we are closest to india and so naturally uh we started publishing a lot of uh, south asian literature uh, the indian subcontinent literature art architecture culture and everything and despite that we just we we i was thinking on getting new topics on board new books and everything we realized we haven't even covered um 1/10th of what is there in india okay. and uh, and we always uh, since we closest to the country that is where my root lies where, where our root lies i think that's where the idea to represent south asian culture to the world uh, germinated and okay. uh, but that's not all we are also now slowly and steadily getting into bringing uh, international literature to india because we don't publish books are never published in a lacuna they're always uh, inspired mm. um instigated and 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 uh, written with um with the uh, and have so many different factors um uh, playing around to actually uh, creating a book so it's it's impossible to be only uh publish south asia uh, so indian literature without actually looking into what is happening in the indian subcontinent we have published okay. a book called uh historic temples in pakistan we have just recently published a book on bangladesh war um we have published a fiction from nepal and uh, so on and so forth so we're constantly enlarging our list to incorporate as much as possible but okay. uh, we still realize there is lot that has not been covered in india despite years and years of publication okay. and the focus we would um uh, like to be um, to keep it on on the indian subcontinent at this point of time because that's all we can do right now that's all where our expertise lies in at this point of time and still there is a long way to go because there are so many books are left you know to be published or to be covered yeah and i'm glad because of it is yeah. never going to end yeah definitely and and we are glad that newgi books are doing this thing because because of you we are bringing the cultural to the to all the people uh, across the world yeah so we have a uh, bahuvachan hindi imprint of newgi books so how did you start this uh, bahuvachan okay it is a long arduous journey for several years we wanted to get into hindi yes. publishing i think we started the entire process in 2011 as early as 2011 or 12 um so we were already we are already started publishing translations into english under our imprint thornbird imprint okay. came later but we had started publishing translations into english 
then um and we were uh, creating a market for ourselves in the illustrated book segment in english okay. now we realized that the hindi book market is very different and we do not have a dedicated imprint or a list to hindi illustrated books okay. so that is where we decided to take our expertise forward to another language that is the hindi book market and then we then came bahu vachan we okay. started publishing we've done around 20 30 books now we are going slow but we have a lot on our plate we are working on uh, we will be publishing around four or five more books this year in hindi and okay. that is how the entire concept of uh, bahu vachan came into being okay. so as for the market at in the beginning because they seem to be little oh, high higher price than the uh, price range that was there uh, that exists in the market so okay. people were not very uh, receptive in the beginning but okay. as and when it started uh, it place but there were a lot of distributors who helped okay. us place the book the market and things like that and when it started becoming visible things started to change now okay. more and more people are getting on to reading and every other day i get a request that you should translate this book into hindi in bahuvachan i was like definitely but we would need time we, it has to yeah. be up uh, it is a long process because at the end of the day uh, we've been an english publisher for the longest time but we are slowly moving into hindi and even in english we learned all on our way we okay. learn the nuances of publishing we learn the nuances of illustrated book publishing and so to take it to the hindi market with its own challenges its own uh, uh special nuances we have we are learning the entire yeah. thing right now so it's going to take some time i'm patient hopefully we'll be able to do as much better as soon as the pandemic is over yeah <laughs> definitely and so uh, so the name bahu vachan how did you yeah. come up with the name bahu vachan um yeah interesting um at first it was not supposed to be bahu vachan inside story we had think thought of something else but we realized that was taken and then we can't go for that uh, we couldn't uh, file a trademark for that okay so then we went bahu vachan means what it could be inter not meaning but it could be interpreted as many voices uh so in different languages okay. so in the illustrated books is the initial offering under this imprint okay. um in the future we think that we will be uh include we will include other lang perhaps include other languages in bahuvachan wow. but also okay. at the same time have different perspectives on a particular subject now no subject is going to have a one view right we have got to break the bias and okay. we have to have multiple views for it and so keeping that in mind keeping that in mind we decided to keep it bahuvachan and i'm glad that you just you know just shared this thought that you know bringing the more regional languages into the you know under the bahu vachan and i'm hoping that this initiate will go you know will go, grow in the future in, in upcoming years and yeah finger crossed yeah totally <laughs> so people are very uh, fantasized with the westernization you know western world So, do you think yeah. Yogi Books has the potential to encourage the people to learn more about the human values, beliefs, and the history of India? Because nowadays, what we see, you know, our generation they are just moving forward and moving towards the westernization, and they are lacking behind of the you know Indian values. So, what do you think the what's the Yogi Book will gonna be do about you know in this context? uh well uh that's a very very complicated question i don't think a single person has the power 
uh, to change the entire world, despite the fact that uh, Rabindranath Thakur said that "akla chalo re," um, <laughs> if nobody is going to come along with you. uh you start the movement all by yourself but at the same time we know when um uh momentum is achieved um, where to achieve a momentum uh we have to have uh like minded people coming together so through yogi books we intend okay. to bring the like minded people together uh that could be our contribution uh to again um start of uh, uh increase our focus on our indian literature and indian art and indian aesthetics you know it's it's very um ironic that at, when something goes uh, is started up, people start appreciating something from india abroad we start yeah. taking note of these things and uh, it's it just happens that way but at the same time we also see that um young readers read more of western literature they read uh more of um, english literature or or written in english um than reading our um our own literature in translation right. um and that that is what we are trying to do trying to package our translations even in english in in literature uh from different languages from different indian languages to english so that they are more accessible to our readers in india at the same time i think uh, translating uh, more and more of these english this not just english but foreign literature into our indigenous languages uh, for example hindi uh, bangla and other languages uh, that can help us foster more interest in 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 indian literature indian history indian indian uh, everything indian right everything but indian that's indian. not going to happen alone yogi books alone cannot you cannot do it right it's an entire industry and uh, there is a great solidarity in the entire industry we keep right. on exchanging notes and working together and uh, that's how things progress it's it's again books cannot be published in isolation they yeah. have to be done in 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 an in, in a team and uh, we are grateful that uh, there is a, there are a lot of collaborations happening in 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 indian publishing and we see a lot of great work being, being done in this regard so it's not a question about what newgi books can do but it's a question about what the entire publishing industry should and can do thank you trisha and i'm hoping that the publishing community the publishing fraternity will help you out and will give you the constant support to you know increase this initiative to increase the bringing the indian values within us uh, just like me and other people thank you so within 18 years of the establishment of new yogi books what changes you have seen to recognize women authors and their thought provoking writings that have the power to change the orthodox conviction in our society um well from the very beginning our first book was on padmashri geeta chandran okay um she is my guru and she means the world to me uh so we started a journey uh with a woman um we've always published women writers okay uh, i wouldn't want to call them women writers the writers who are women um but over the years we've also focus on breaking myths and barriers and stereotypes um around and around women for example we published a translation of uh bani basu's uh, shet pathore thala from bangla it's called a plate of white marble in english which talks about which loosely i'm going to talk about the premise loosely on the premise of widows in india and how okay. they are still like the missing population uh after that uh no we published a book called breaking paths stories of very strong women in from different corners of the country and how yeah. they struggled and fought 
against uh, against and break broke stereotypes to uh, to uphold their principles and, and and visions and their rights so that is one that was written by um, the um, by Meera Khanna to not just break uh, the barriers in terms of uh, the written word but okay. also how actively that is uh, how we can actively translate that to the grassroots level so we are trying to do new things each and every day we uh, are still at a very nascent stage i think we haven't done enough there is so much happening for example we published this book called people on a roof it is about uh, a, a caretaker a caretaker okay. of uh, of a family where there have been problems of related to mental health okay. and how being um, a woman has its own challenges and how the protagonist being one of the strongest women that I've come across. Um, um, how it's so empowering to just read the book. So when I read the manuscript, I felt very good about it. And then we are making, I'm trying to break small, small barriers. Uh, for example, uh, we are publishing um, a monograph on Tamoy Savitri, theater, Northeast. Very okay. less people know about her, but she has great done great work and so we are trying to uh, also come up with monographs which could be of great inspiration to a lot of people a um, um, lot of children a lot of parents a lot of uh, women a um, lot of um, non-binary people also okay. and it's just not women we are also trying to actively uh, work on a list um, uh, focusing on LGBTQ plus and so on. So um, that is also on our action plan right now. I am glad, Trisha. You know, you just said these initiatives that you you guys have been doing for the women or not for the women for the society, and I'm think that this will bring a change in everyone's life, whether it's a girl, whether it's a non-binary people, whether it's a man. So my next question to you. For women authors, do you think that the book can be a powerful weapon to break the biasness and spread women empowerment? And you are, you know, breaking the biasness, you know, just you shared some names and they have been doing very prolific work. So I would like to ask, Again, that do you really think that books are the powerful weapon to do such things? Absolutely, absolutely. Be it men or women, it doesn't matter. Be it any gender, be it any caste, be it any creed, doesn't matter. Books okay. have always been a very powerful tool. Um, and, and they are important uh, uh, in breaking any barrier. If you don't have literature, if you don't write your uh, challenge, what is happening out there? How are you going to grow, go ahead? For example, uh, what I realized, um, LG, the subject of addressing LGBTQ in India, in Indian English literature, came much later. But in, sub, addressing uh, the subject of LGBTQ started much earlier in our Indian literature in languages. For example, Malayalam, Bangla, Marathi. This has already it had already started in the nineteen nineties. So okay. uh, not just English literature, but literature of all nature helps uh, break these barriers. And not just books, any creative medium, any creative medium, be it the art, the movies, um, uh, music, any creative medium helps us break these barriers. So these are very important uh, okay. ways of reaching out to much more people and, and, and uh, creating awareness and actually making them understand uh, uh, through emotions, not being pedantic about it, but through emotions and, and, and different forms of storytelling that uh, the desire and the need to break the barriers and being a more secular uh, uh being more secular within us um, okay. that concept yeah of course books are very powerful uh, tools and that is perhaps one of the reasons why i decided to be in publishing okay so you always have been a book lover like 
since you are since you are a child yeah i was more of a comic and a thriller lover okay. in the beginning just like almost every other children i was not a very intellectual child perhaps but i used to read a lot of thrillers okay uh, nancy hardy boys feluda bomkesh and um, a lot of uh, my grandmother used to read a lot uh, of them in bangla to me um then uh, i was forced to read a lot of hindi i struggled but then i read a lot in hindi from premchand okay. to many other uh, uh, writers um but um, yeah i think i think after i finished schooling i started okay. reading much more. Now started i could okay. read much more but i had read uh, uh, um, hemingway when i was 12 Okay. I read Manto when I was eleven, and uh, Saki when I was nine or eight or something like that. And I was very fascinated by the world of short stories. I used to love a lot of short stories back then. Um, okay. And uh, I remember waking up every morning to my parents, my dad reciting Rabindranath Tagore's poetry every morning. Okay. In the beginning, I was like, "Please let me sleep," but then I started in. <laughs> it and uh, over time we got uh, and it suddenly we realized that all of those words which is going inside our head in our subconscious we were not even realizing that they were actually we were learning those things just in our sleep as well because my parents yeah. every morning my dad used to recite and that's how i used to wake up so yeah it is yeah so perhaps my my pet not perhaps but most certainly my parents played a very significant role uh in making um reading uh interesting for us i remember still going to uh, bahari sans uh, when i was a child okay. and my parents used to let go or full circle and they used to let go of us buy as many books as you want i used to pick a big pile and they never said no baki everything else they could say no if i wanted to play playstation i think they would say no but when came to books, the books yeah. it was never a no but they, they of course actually they never said no to anything i wanted to do i wanted to dance they never said no to it but when it specifically came to books they never said no to me in fact they encouraged uh, uh every time that uh, we bought more books than we could read so that we are always under the pressure to read uh read after our uh, course material and everything i remember reading a book under a blanket at 12 or 1 o'clock with a torch on and then suddenly my mama comes in and she shouts go to sleep you have school tomorrow and i was like i used to get scared and throw the uh torch and then go back go back to sleep but um, she also had fun she was not very serious of course sleep was not okay. for the child yeah but she also took it in jest and never really created a set too much about it or anything like that but yeah so so trisha uh, you must feel you know grateful today ki yeah that i have such great parents that is why i'm today here right now you know in a publishing industry because because they were there for you you know for teaching you guiding you such things yeah absolutely so, absolutely yeah so out of a reading question there is a question comes up reading and writer reader and writer are two different things right everyone has this myth if someone is a voracious reader then they are writers too share your views on the account of your own experience so you must be a great reader so most probably that you you write i guess so hmm. but you know i was interviewing this author and and i asked about this reading and writing question so hmm. she said ki uh, she said i don't think so that if someone is reader they they needs to be writer too so what is your thoughts on this on the basis of your own experience hmm like reading like writing reading is an art both of them are art uh they overlap significantly but then there are portions which do not overlap as well um one person may be a voracious reader but may not be a very good writer 
but if a person is a writer i've almost always seen that they are good readers as well okay. almost always now writing is a skill in itself um i may have uh, read thousands of books right okay. but that might give me content but how to present it how to write it is an art and yeah. hence you can't really say that uh, uh, they are one and the same thing or they are two absolutely different things there are overlaps because the more you expose yourself to different writing styles your style also develops yeah but you can't say that they're absolutely mutually independent or uh, they are absolutely um, um overlapping each other yeah it's yeah. Like, you know? yeah there are overlaps but there are also portions which do not overlap right. so if if someone would say that trisha who you are a reader or a writer what would you say to them ha huh, a dancer a dancer okay so a storyteller how, how many languages do you speak trisha mm I speak three and a half languages. I'm learning German right now. Okay. But I speak three and a half languages, like English, Hindi, Bangla. I also okay. understand a bit of Marathi because I stayed in Pune for a while. I understand, but I can't speak. Um, yeah, I think, and I'm learning German. So three and a half. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So as you know that this event, Pragati Vichar, Break the Bias, is. specifically based on the theme break the biasness which is a yeah. theme of you know this year international women day so i would mm-hmm. like to ask one question regarding to this to the you know for the publishing industry women mm-hmm. you are on the account of your own experience right what advice mm-hmm. would you like to give to the women publishing industry fellows so and you also I- mention your friends in a women industry yeah i think i am always a seeker i ad- seek advice from most of the people but i think um, i would just like to mention two quotes which i follow and i perhaps write it down almost every other day uh and they are all about the mind so okay. the first one is learning never exhausts the mind this is by da vinci and this is one thing which i think i follow and i could share this with everybody who would uh, like to go ahead in any industry they are in um that learning always keep learning there is no end to learning and you are never completely you've not learned everything in this world so there is always a scope for learning um be humble about it um um and that's it uh, and you will keep growing uh, no matter what happens you will come you will face a lot of challenges but you will keep growing if you actually uh, become a student for a lifetime and the second quote um, which i'm not going to explain at all but okay. this is by milton the mind is its own place okay in itself it can create a heaven out of hell or a hell of heaven okay yeah so thank you so much tasha yeah thank you very much i hope um i will get feedback for this uh, session as well as okay. i said um, i'm a learner i would definitely like to learn what others feel their thoughts their processes and uh, it would be an enriching experience for me as well and it's just a start i'm hoping that i will also learn from this event and j- i'm just impressed by your you know valent personality your thoughts on the for the women's sake and for the society it's, it's very amazing and i'm and it was a very delightful you know conversation with you and thank you so much for coming today and sharing share and you just shared your thoughts and i'm hoping that people will be influenced by your thoughts and i feel that this interview or the other interviews that will going to be happen for in this event will add up some quality or you know some you know 
good notions in the women mind or in the society to encourage women empowerment thank you so much sasha yeah thank you thank very you. much